wasting any dreams this Christmas. I've made my wish upon that star. The only dream of which my list consists is to always be wherever. Yeah, there will be no praying for the snow to fall. It would not make a difference to me at all. No, I'm not wasting any dreams. This Christmas, I've made my wish, and it came. of Christmas install. Miss Miriam Gordon is cooking hen eggs on the stove. Ten eggs. Ten eggs. Who did you get ten eggs from? Ten and ten sound very similar, my love. But why would I say ten eggs? Dramatising the amount of eggs I was cooking. Anyway, I'm just waiting for Gemma to get here and I'm burning a quick food fragrance ridder up. And it's not a treat for you, Barky Boo. It's not. And today we will be finishing off the tablescape. I need to repot the skimmia and we need to do the garland over the fireplace and the tree in the hallway, and then that's it. Mr. Millie Gordon is going to be doing the Christmas lights outside. Where's my phone? Where's my bag? Yes. Yeah. So Mr. Millen Gordon is going to be doing the kitchen garden Christmas lights and setting those up today, which is lovely. I'm very excited to see how that's going to look. And that is the plan of action for the day. The dogs are losing their mind because Gemma is here, so I'm going to crack on. First port of call is potting up the skimmia, so I've just popped them in slightly larger pots. I was supposed to do this last night, but I didn't have time. And then we're gonna finish this off, but Gemma is back in the house, and we are tackling the burlap ribbon, which Ali very kindly went and picked up for us from uh, Hobbycraft yesterday. Much thinner, just to add a little bit more of a rustic touch to the tree, because the burgundy is like a sort of it's quite a dark colour, you only pick it up in certain light. So we just wanted to accent the tree a little bit more. So we've made Gemma's job really hard because <laughs> uh, she's got to do it around all of the ornaments. But Gemma's just so good at doing the ribbon. Like I just can't, I can't do the ribbon. I feel like there's a certain knack. Yeah? I mean, you might, might change your mind in a minute, say that it looks awful. No, no, I think it looks really good. Ali's not convinced on the tree toppers at the moment, but me and Gemma love them. My job is to fluff this tree, ready for decorating. Ali is doing his thing for the Christmas decorations as well. We're just all doing a thing. I really love doing a tutorial when Ali has his leaf blower out. Do you like that? He, that he loves his leaf blower more than he loves me. Okay, so second part of the tutorial, we are going to be making a centerpiece candle. Yeah. Mm -hmm. candle, kit, candle kit, it's called on the website, but it is a sort of rustic Christmassy centerpiece that you could have with other things or on its own. You know, sat down around the dinner table, Christmas Day, 
good little thing for having on the island yes. as well. Um, but also on like coffee tables, it's just a nice way of integrating candles and it not feeling too like candelabra in, mm -hmm. I think. Yeah. These are good things for like gifts as well. So if you want to like make something for someone and take with you, this also makes a really good gift. And then there's also a little small one which we'll show you too. But let's begin. And I start with the gravel. Yes. So pot on a saucer, because obviously there's a hole at the bottom of the pot. And then adding in your gravel. So the gravel's purpose is to sort of support the tapered candle. Amazing. So you're not actually going to, we're not going to be putting any soil in, are we? No. Oh, wow. So, yeah, all, all the gravel that you have that will come in the kit. We'll just so go straight into the bottom. Yeah, you just need to bring it up. Sort of. Okay. Yeah. You tell me when to stop. Yeah. <laughs> Otherwise, I'll just keep going. Yeah. I feel like it's just done just to pour it in. Yeah, yeah. I reckon that's, yeah, that's probably enough. Yeah, yeah. Okay, fantastico. Okay, then the three candles, you've got your tapered candles um, in ivory, and then, so I would position them in a sort of triangle. Is that fine? Yeah, kind of. <laughs> yes, yeah, perfect, perfect. Okay, so now in the moss, so you will have the bun moss, which is the chunky one, and then the flat moss, which is your fave. Mm. And then that just goes in amongst. Like this? Yep. All sporadically, really. Yeah, and if you feel like your root, if your um, gravel is high, you can take the roots off the back of the bun moss to make it slightly sort of sit flusher. Because mm -hmm. I kind of like it when yeah, it like, well, hangs just over. Just say that, oh, yeah, okay. it's nice. And then if you feel like you want to, you can sort of peg it down with the moss pins that will be in the kit if you want to, sort of just to kind of secure it, but I don't think it needs it because there's more things going on top. So now we can go in with the, uh, let's do the asparagus fern. So that will also be in. So you can just break bits up from your asparagus. So you don't need <gasps> a lot. You... So there are small <laughs> on. So I would go for smaller pieces. So like take these off? Yes. So take the side sheets off the main stem. Got you. And then when you place them in the candle kit, it's best to do it as if you're making a wreath. So with a wreath, you always position the foliages in the same direction, so it will either all be facing clockwise or anti-clockwise, depending on how you know, your brain works. Um, so if you're gonna go back, so you're going anti-clockwise. Is that not the way to go? No, it's fine, it's, it's absolutely fine. So you pop it in, and then you can use your moss pins to secure it. So I've just placed this uh, this piece of asparagus fern in the same sort of direction. Yeah. And then I'm going to take this one. Or is that too much? No, it's perfect. Okay. So I do one more. Have a cling on on the starboard bow. <laughs> oh gosh, yeah, that's really effective, isn't it? Yeah, that's nice. And against the ivory. Of the mm. candles. It feels Christmassy yeah. again, but like not mm -hmm. not garish. No. Much. Mm -hmm. Okay, so then we can add in the um, like conifery pine, just a few sprigs. Again, in the same direction. Yeah. So I probably cut that down a bit, like that. Yeah. And then if you take that little bit of green off the bottom, you'll have a better kind of. Yeah, nice. Ah. Oh. But I think the beauty of this is it doesn't need to be perfect. No, that's the thing, is that if, it, if it's looking too perfect, you've kind of gone, you've got the wrong candle kit. Yeah. Apart from the leaf blower, do you feel relaxed? The, the leaf blower is my relax, relaxing sound now, otherwise I wouldn't get through life, because it's the constant <laughs> noise in my existence. Okay. Okay, so now we can add in the twigs and the dry thyme. So you've got your dry thyme twigs and, and, dry and thyme. birch, yeah. Okay. You want the wick to be obviously above the, the head greenery. height of the yeah. greenery and the twigs. I mean, if you're popping the twigs in and they are away from the, yeah, you know, you that's just have fine. To, but caveat: just be careful. Yeah, you just have to be mindful that these things can catch light. Yeah. So you have to be responsible for where you put things. Yeah, and never leave the candle unattended. Yes, ever. that is the most important factor of them all. I'll just snap that. Um, <laughs> I, I feel like I've made these all too like 
the same. I'm going to do some short ones. So if you add in the dry timer, you can sort of lay that on the almost on the like the floor of it, so it looks kind of woodlandy. That's what I would do. Next. Yeah. Fantastic. So now with the time, so we've just placed the time on sort of like the woodland floor. Yeah. But also stuck it in a little bit. But that's just the one that you probably have to be most mindful of because as the candles get lower, the time is dried, the twigs are dried. So what I would suggest doing is getting the longest burning pillar candles. Uh, uh, what are these called? Tapered candles. Tapered, Tapered candles. candles. They probably will be longer than those ones. Yes. Ones that I have burned super quickly. Um, so I need to get myself some ones that burn a bit longer. But yeah, it is obviously your responsibility to make sure that you are doing this responsibly. Mm -hmm. I do it because I love it and it makes me happy, but I don't ever leave them unattended, if that makes sense. So in the kits, they will be eight hour burns. Eight hour burns. So it's quite a slow, yeah. a slow burn. A slow burn. Um, and now it's just the cones, the pine cones. Lovely. The little miniature ones that you can just dot in amongst. I personally like them clustered together, so yeah. I would put, say, three together, um, and then maybe I'd put sort of two somewhere else, mm -hmm. rather than kind of having them. Yeah. And they're good for, like, using to cover things as well. Yeah. And you can use the moss, um, any moss you have left over to cover. I'd yeah. say that's it. Yeah, yeah that's done, isn't it? Finished? Yeah. Well, hey. Perfect. Love it. And this is what it should look like all finished. Looks just, it looks so good. And I, oh, there's obviously in this one, we've added what I've got on my wreath, but that doesn't come in the kit. So it has a different feel. This one feels almost a bit more like festive, which I, yeah. I really like. Yeah, really, really like it. And with the asparagus fern just billowing over the edge. Oh, it looks so, so good. Oh my gosh, we did that. <laughs> so lovely. Um, but also that these are a kit as well, these smaller ones. Yeah. So you could buy these, they're, they're individual, but mm -hmm. you could get like three and pop these down the, the sort of center of your table. Yeah. If I come in, yeah. So again, it's got the asparagus ferns, the dried thyme, the uh, pine cones, moss, all of the gravel, the pot, etc., and then the tapered candle. So if you just wanted something even more paired back where you wanted to put some on a windowsill or um, on top of a fire, that kind of thing, you could have a trio, two, however many you want, and these, again, are just super quick to pot up. I think we're gonna use one of these in the living room. So, yes, I'll link these down below as well. We are now back into the living room, ready to tackle the fireplace, ready for the garland install. And we're trying things a little bit differently this year, trying to keep things potted and things like that. So, we're gonna see how this goes. To away from the... That, isn't it? Or are we going that? I was oh, thinking down, down. Yeah, yeah. Let me do that. <laughs> Let's do that. You don't want to watch the TV, do you, all Christmas? Yeah. Or yeah. Yeah. You don't. You don't no, like I do. Yeah. I really like it against the white. Yeah. Like, I, I think like it's going to be really lovely. Like adding that sort of, you could have almost like a, a bit of it. Obviously, going over. Yeah. And over that bit as well. And then it's because we don't sit there. Mm. We sit Wait, here. Anything. That's not blocking anything. Oh, I love this idea nice. because honestly that's the most heart heartbreaking thing when it's like, it looks amazing, but being able to keep it in a pot yeah. is gonna, I think, really yeah. keep it. Because you can it. water it and it shouldn't die with the fire. Yes. You just need to keep it damp. Yeah. We leave it in the white spot and I cover it. It's like, he he well, I was gonna say I have to cover it with moss, but I, do, I, I personally, personally like the idea of having I do. Perfect. But I'm, I overruled. We've got the terracotta there, so I'm totally into that. And I think it will feel when we get to this side of Christmas where it's midwinter. If it's still there, mm -hmm. I can just take the bow out of it, and yeah. this will still be a beautiful yeah, install. Yeah. I have a funny screen. feeling this is going to be something that stays. Yeah. <laughs> right. That's it. Yeah. Yeah. Done, no, I've done like the garland for years. Yeah. I love the ivy there. Yeah. The ivy it's just like the, really the nice hops. Stuff. I think the hops. Every. I was saying at the beginning of the video, like. Every so often we install something and I'm like, yeah, I don't think this needs to change. Yeah. Like this just needs to stay. Yeah. And I think this might be one of it. Anyway. So the plan of action in here is something a little bit different this year. I'll send you the inspiration image that I found that I sent to Gemma because obviously last year we had that really relaxed, effortless trailing um, of the pine over the fireplace and I loved it. 
The only thing that I find is obviously I want my Christmas install quite early and um, those kinds of garlands, when they're real, tend to dry out quite quickly and they still look lovely and it still lasted really well but this time we want, I wanted to try something using actual potted items. So what we're going to be doing is potting up one big ivy to this side here and then lots of little ivies over the top so that I can keep those watered, covering it with moss and just making it feel like really like alive and then we're going to have um, bracken and uh, pine cones and feathers and maybe even a little bit of the the red tartan just so that it ties in and see if this works and I've said to Gemma I have a funny feeling that this might be one of those things one of those installs that stays because once we take the ribbon out it's probably gonna look just really lovely in here so Yes, I think that's going to be very interesting to see how this comes about, but we're going to pot up some of the bits and pieces now, start popping them in place, and yeah, so yeah, I'll show you the inspiration image, and um, it was that was it. I was like, oh my gosh, when I saw that, I was like, I want to use pots, and I want to use things that are going to actually continue living, so this is a bit of a test drive, but we're going to see how it goes. So at the moment, we are potting up the little pots of ivy, so we've got these little guys, then we've got a few assorted... Um, different sizes just so that it can all weave in together and do a different, less uniformed feel, I'd say. I should also say, we would normally be potting this up in my greenhouse, but Mr. Miller Gordon is out there cleaning it for his shoot. So um, I can't make a mess in there, so I'm making a mess in the kitchen. So I think this is going to be fascinating to watch this turn into. The garland because at the moment we've got oasis and the little trays and a few pots as sort of the skeleton of the garland porter off of the moss i just have to inspect it mummy i just have to make sure that it's okay barkley i just don't care but porter cares about everything i'm feeling very redundant but i, I like to think that i was i, I found the inspiration yeah. i don't know how to execute it you're you're right there so you, you sit there and eat Christmas and you can direct me. <laughs> yeah, I'll be the eyes. Yeah, you be the boss. Yeah. <laughs> what was Ali's response when he saw the red then? Oh, he loved it. Did he? Yeah. He just wasn't, he just, he's just not sure about the tree topper. I mm. personally think the tree topper looks great, but Ali has a very weird brain that instantly goes to rather than how does this look and the tones, he goes to what does this remind me of? Oh yeah, see what you mean. Yeah. And that's just not where my, my brain goes. No, you take something for... Yeah, and like, like the tones look not. really beautiful in here and this is very much like a Ralph Lauren-esque tree. So this works really well where he's, he's gone, this reminds me of this. And I'm like, yeah, yeah but put but that to not one that. side. Yeah. yeah. I promise you I am not looking at your bum. Oh, why not? <laughs> <I'm with it. laughs> I mean, I can look if you want me to. <laughs> Because your daddy has a hat on and you don't. Pardon? That's why? Yeah. Did he his daddy's got his hat on and he's got um, a leaf blower. Very, very tempestuous for. for 40. Can't cope. Well, this is where we are at so far. We're about to start adding pheasant feathers and ferns and then we're going to try the ribbon, I think, and then see if we feel we need any more foliage. But. I'm hoping that this will last very well. Mr. Mill and Gordon has let the uh, chick chicks out in the garden. They're just making their way out of the little coop. <laughs> little blustery day for them. <laughs> well, I'm going to put it out there that I think that this is quite possibly my most favourite Christmas decor. I have ever ever done and the fact that this could potentially last as long as we want it to as long as we can keep it alive for is also very very exciting so what we've done is we've tied in the green tartan uh, the red tartan from the tree just to give it that feel and this would usually be a little bit too twee for me but I think the way we've done the bow it just feels a lot more paired back and lovely so 
yeah and you can see all of the different textures in here the pine cones the moss the feathers the ivy the asparagus ferns um, I can't remember what this one is called now but it's lethal there are about uh five potted plants in here to create this and then covered in moss and it's just fantastic next to the tree and then on the console table at the back we are continuing the three myrtle the trio of myrtle because they just look really nice there Gemma is also going to be selling these um branches as a as a kit on her website so you'll be able to buy these I don't actually know what these are called but they are so rustic and festive I think this just looks like such a gorgeous little vignette. Love it. We've got the little candle pot that is slightly on the wonk. Um, little candle pot on the ottoman. My most favorite Christmas decor ever. The chick chicks are already causing carnage on the patio. <laughs> what are you doing girls? What are you doing? Well, the house is pretty much finished. I have actually lit the fire as well in the living room, which looks so cozy. The sun is just setting, well, the day is ending. And so the light is quite blue. So I kind of want to show you things when it's evening and you've got the twinkle, but Mr. Millen Gordon is still outside working on the greenhouse. He's cleaned it from top to bottom. Um, he's now getting the lights up and we'll be getting the reindeer out. I've been left with a lovely bunch of my wedding day roses on the uh, center island. However, I'm gonna cut these down and make them into a little arrangement in my antique pickling jar. Um, the other thing that I'm doing at the moment, which you're probably gonna think I'm weird, but you know how I've obviously like, I'm trying to like streamline things a little bit. And I would always say that like, one of the things that's a bit difficult online is talking about something and saying something and then it being like used against you. This is something that I see happen so much online whereby like, I've obviously been talking to you guys about um, the minimalists and minimalism as a word, I think it's one of those words that like gets people's back up first and foremost, but it's also like, it, I think it can be quite polarizing for some people, but it's been something that I've been really interested to learn about and take elements and just try and be more conscious and I've talked about this on my channel where I'm like, I'm not gonna become an, uh, a minimalist. And I've like said that categorically, like I'm not gonna, go, gonna become a minimalist. That's not my nature, but I can try to do better. And this is just such a roundabout way of saying things, but like, I find that, I'd love to hear your thoughts on that because I understand that there will be people that stumble across me that don't necessarily have the time to watch all my videos and so if they were to see things like that where someone's gone well she said she was a minim minimalist and then look at all of this it's like first of all I never said I was a minimalist does that like does that does that impact the way that you think I know that there'll be some people that are really impressionable but I that's always something that really like I think I probably have to do some work on understanding that anyone that believes that someone that's just said yeah she said she was becoming a minim minimalist and there I am showing you five different jumpers that's probably not my person anyway, but anyway, roundabout way is that one of the things I find is that we have a lot of decorative things in life in general, you know, like we have like decorative vases and jugs and what's it? And then you have other things that maybe aren't so beautiful in like tubs like this. And this has been annoying me because it's on the side in my kitchen and I like my kitchen to look lovely. I like it to always be like beautiful, but also it needs to be convenient and it needs to be practical. So I've had, oh gosh, I've had these old Fortnum and Mason um, finest English Stilton cheese jars that I got in an antiques shop in Wales. I got two of them. I've got finest English blue Stilton and just normal Stilton. And so I've given these a good wash and a sterilize. <laughs> that makes me sound like I can sing. Well, it might just be because my head's here, but. Horrible there, but the acoustics right here 
are like, this is like when I was recording my um, audio book. Wow. That's what it reminds me of. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> I was having a moment there. What I was trying to say, I probably need to clean this now that I've breathed all in it, but I've cleaned this out and I've sterilized it. And what I'm going to do, because this always lives on my pantry shelf there, instead, I'm going to decant this into there. Now, it doesn't fit. Ideally, I wouldn't have to decant it, but it doesn't fit. So I'm just going to do that because it means I've not got two things laying around my kitchen. I've got one that looks lovely, but is functional. So anyway, that's what I'm doing. Do I need to sterilise it? Because I breath on it, though. Probably not. We're all friends here. Don't worry about it. Oh. Oh. And this is probably a good opportunity, if I haven't already told you, that I am still taking my l glutamine And I have to say that it has changed my life. Even when we were at my friend's yesterday, they were like, my friend was like, oh my gosh, you've not like, we had a Nando's. Oh my gosh, you've not loosened your trousers. Like you always get so like bloated. I was like, not anymore. My quality of life has improved so much thanks to this. So anyway, that was my roundabout way of telling you about that. So now I'm going to do a bit of faffing in the house, get everything ready and have a tidy up. Now, I have been working on this tree in the hallway. Gemma did the ribbons, but this is like our hallway tasteful ornament tree. Um, you're probably not getting the full, the full shebang from this at the moment, but it's when you come closer that we have a, a few little ornaments that we've collected over the years. So this is Ali's white winky owl. Um, we have these Fortnum & Mason uh, initial uh, baubles that our friend Sam and Alex got us. Then I've got some little Dalesford watering cans. I've got a little greenhouse here, another owl because Ali loves owls. A little sausage dog in a scarf. More watering cans down there. And I think there's a few other bits and pieces in there, um, but this is definitely something that we will add to over the years. We've gone for the burgundy theme because this tartan is just like the one. I need Ali to move it over though because it's a bit on the wonk at the moment. So I need to just ship that over. I didn't say ship then. Shift that over. And if anyone can tell me where this tartan is from, I would actually love to get some for autumn winter in the living room as well. Get more of these done because I love that. So, so nice. And even for the kitchen, to be honest. On the kitchen island, which I probably need to trim the wick of, this is the 100 acres a Christmas candle that is burning on our island at the moment, just making it smell very, very festive in here. And I'm starting to look at place settings. I believe that these were sent from Kado. I think that's how you say it. Kado? Kado? I have no idea. Last year, but these are the oak leaf printed crackers. And I think I'm going to incorporate these this year because I think it all works really nicely with the, the table setting anyway. So yes, I'm going to try and play around with this and get this just set up so that we can get some pictures because I think it's going to be really nice when it's all done. I actually made this little candle kit earlier with Gemma because I'm going to be taking this to um, as a gift because we're going for a Sunday roast tomorrow with another couple and their family. And so this is going to be a bit of a gift for them. We're going to take some eggs as well um, and probably some other bits and bobs. We've got some mulled wine as well that we want to take with us. I'm now looking at the tablescape um, and just seeing how these are getting on. So these are the linens that I'm going to be using. I bought these last year from the set. It's one of my favourite places to get linens. They do really tasteful um, kitchen linens that I love. And so what I'm thinking, I mean, I like to keep it quite like I like to keep it quite simple on the tables because I think you can get obviously a bit um you can get a bit cluttered and things like that and so with this beautiful tablescape I think a simple linen with your cutlery and your cracker work really really well you could do a little calligraphy name place which I might do even though it's just Ali and I and I know people would think I'm really really weird for doing that but genuinely it's a good opportunity for me to practice my calligraphy and I just think it'd be quite lovely and unexpected from him as well. It is getting dark outside and he is still out there, but we are going to have a bit of a turning on of the light ceremony because I think he's just troubleshooting it now. 
well, I have been summoned to the Mill and Gordon big Christmas tree lights turn on. Popping on my Holland Cooper coat and my Holland Cooper wellies and ready to go. You ready, Bordy? You excited? Come on, Bucky. Out we go. Come on, Smolly. Come on. Okie cokey. Ali has been working hard in the garden all day. Here? Three, two, one. Wow! Oh my goodness! <laughs> wow! Oh, he's even used the one that's head doesn't work anymore. Oh wow, it looks so good. We've got a Christmas tree in there which is just perfect <gasps> wow the smell in this house at the moment is absolutely incredible it is a Sunday and Mr Millen Gordon is cooking oh. a roast <laughs> he's cooking a roast and um, I've lit the candles on the table in preparation I also have a very, very lovely pair of rather festive Ralph Lauren pyjamas and um, I thought, I realised I haven't shown you an actual full finished walkthrough of the um, Christmas decor in the house. So considering we're having such a festive Sunday, I thought I'll get to that point and I'll drop it in here and then you can carry on with the video. Um, I also thought, even though we watched a Christmas movie this morning, do you not think yeah, that this... okay. <laughs> he knew he knew that I was gonna ask if I could watch the holiday. <laughs> so I think we're gonna watch the holiday, it's a lovely film. Yeah, so we're gonna watch the holiday um this evening after we have our roast and I am so looking forward to this. We've basically spent the entire weekend in our pajamas and I think that this is exactly I don't have pajamas, I just need to clarify that. You do have pajamas. I, know, I haven't got them on. No, 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 no. Ali, he's not. I really... need to wear pajamas more. We need to get these nice ones, don't we? Yeah. I want to get some I... white pipes pajamas. Yeah, no. Just... Yeah, actually, to be fair, I wanted to get you a pair of those new and Lingwood ones, and I didn't buy them at the time because I didn't know what no, size. Happen, did oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I didn't buy them at the time because they didn't. I didn't know what size Ali would have needed. And um, then when we went back to finally get them, they didn't do them anymore because they do things very limited. Uh, but perhaps some Ralph Lauren pyjamas, like these. I bet they do these in men's. Um, I think for me, something just plain and white. Well, that's Ali's very diplomatic way of saying he doesn't like wearing pyjamas. Um, <laughs> <what I said. laughs> but yeah, we've basically had a really, really lovely, relaxed, weekend where we've just spent it the two of us i have not put a scrap of makeup on my face i have just basically moved from one set of pajamas to the next set of pajamas and it's been really lovely and we've definitely needed it we've got a few more events and bits and pieces coming up um before we finish for christmas so um we just gave ourselves some downtime and it means i come back and i'm like fighting fit and ready to to vlog so it's definitely proving to me why i'm so happy that um, I'm taking Vlogmas a little bit less kind of intense this year. Um, so yeah, once we've had our Christmas, well not, not our Christmas dinner, but once we've had our Sunday lunch, I will show you all of the finished bits and pieces because I obviously haven't shown you the finished uh, entrance way and just showing you the, the, the decorations at night, I feel like it feels a little bit different. So you get a full tour of the Christmas decor. I have also finally received my parcel from West of the Moon, which I use their baubles in every Christmas uh, intro pretty much every year. And she did say that she was sending me some new ones, but they got stuck. She's, they're only coming from Ireland, but sometimes they take a bit of time. And I audibly gasped when I opened this up because the burgundy tweed, oh my goodness. And of course, the gingham. I almost feel like the gingham would actually look nice in the spare bedroom all year round. She's also included some other bits and pieces. Oh, she's started doing cards and a little bauble 
mini bauble Christmas advent calendar. How cute. That's so sweet. But yes, I definitely think that some of these will look really lovely on the tree. So all is not lost, the fact that I didn't show you. And I also get to show you how things are settling in as well. I've added the candelabras to the table because I just love a candelabra at Christmas time. Um, obviously, if you don't love candelabras, you can go for the potted centerpieces that I showed you in the video. But these are just candelabras that I got from Amazon and they've served us really, really well. And sometimes you can even just tie some velvet ribbons to them and it just makes them look really festive. So that's also an option. Um, but obviously the roses have gone over, so I've taken the roses out but all of the flowers are starting to come into bloom and still holding really really well obviously the table is not set properly at the moment but it will be and what do you have in front of you dinner that's right full roast squeaky clean kitchen yeah a magician and i had a bath <laughs> you have to turn for down 15, the music for 15 minutes as well yeah the 15 minute bath Goodness oh, me. These are carrots from the kitchen garden. Mr. Mill and Gordon's famous roast potatoes. And gravy. Homemade Yorkshire puds. Perfect. Mm. Well, the entranceway hallway takes full inspiration from the foliage that we've used throughout the rest of the house but also the garland over the fireplace so we've gone for a mossy base again and more hellebores more ivy and the ivy trails all the way up the picture frame as well which i really like we've got the holland cooper uh, christmas noel candle in there as well i'm literally clinging onto it for dear life because it smells so good but i do have the space nk um Christmas candle to live in its place once that one is gone. Um, the hellebores are erupting, which I'm really, really happy about as well. And this just looks like a little winter woodland floor, which I think will last really well into the new year. And it's not going to make me feel like I want to just tear everything out um, when we get to January. Isn't that right, Portaline? But the main event, I would probably say, if we turn these lights off, is the kitchen, the cozy, cozy kitchen, which with all of the candlelight and the sort of wagon wheel chandelier, the way that all of the glass reflects the lights on the tree, it just makes me very, very happy. It just feels so magical and sparkly. And I generally just keep the table like this, so I don't have a full setting down, but I think the napkins and the placemats and the crackers just make it feel enough without it using up all of our cutlery and plates. It doesn't need to always be set, I don't think. But I really like the introduction of the candelabras. They just look so good. We also have some presents under the tree. However, they are fake presents. Um, we wrapped those up for the Christmas uh, intro and then didn't use them. So these are completely empty. There is nothing in there, um, but they look lovely. And we used this really lovely paper that was sent to us. Just loving the textures and finishes of this tree so much. I think the burlap and the ribbon work really well together and the colors and the richness, richness just looks so beautiful. Then we come into the living room where the fire is lit. The garland is still going strong and I'm really, really happy with how it is in here. We've got the little, Hello Petal potted candle on the center island. Oh, we've got a strategically placed evergreen by the tree as well. But the tones, I think this is definitely my favorite tree. The tones of this, the finishes, the warmth of it. It feels sort of woodeny and natural, but still traditional, which I really, I think actually kind of has merged my two styles quite nicely together because I like that traditional feel, but I also like that rustic uh, vibe as well. And so all of the linens and the wood textures, these antique baubles have really lent itself well to pairing back the uh, tones of the ribbon and just making it feel more in line. Um, but the pots are all going well on here as well. Fire roaring living his best life and this is one of the kits that Gemma has got as well and this is actually completely dried out now and it's looking really good like there's no water in there this is just living its best life um, being evergreen and beautiful in the pot and then obviously I showed you the last tree out here and um, this is our sort of more family 
orientated, but still very much in line with our stuff, which has now been straightened up thanks to Mr. Mill and Gordon and all decorated. It smells delicious out here. The only thing, the view from Ali's study is very, very lovely. However, our brand new Christmas tree from Balsam Hill that we bought last year has broken. I don't know whether it wasn't plugged in properly and it's, something's happened, but it's um, the plug has melted, sadly, but it is still very, very lovely out here, looking very festive. We also have Christmas lights on the front of the house as well, but obviously I'm not gonna show you those. Um, so that is what we have done this year in the house for the Christmas sort of decor. And it has been really lovely to like come up with everything and just put everything in place and seeing everything come to life because I'm not gonna lie, when I was mood boarding, I really struggled to get everything that I wanted and to just get examples of it. But now seeing it all together, it's just, it's, it's so lovely. And it wasn't so much work that it felt like I was like putting on a wedding or anything like that. It just, it felt nice. So now what I'm going to do is plan the tablescape for the Christmas party. That is my next port of call and I've already had a few ideas for that as well because we're having it in a really lovely old pub um, locally. So yes, I've got to start planning that. But anything I can link, I'll link down below for this. But um, yeah, I thought I'd give you the full on walkthrough of the house and I'm just having spent the whole weekend in my PJs in this house being cozy and warm by the fire. I can confirm that this is my favourite Christmas decor ever. <laughs> Good boy, Porty. Good boy. You ready to watch the holiday? You ready? Oh, the boys are fighting over the same toy at the moment. Oh. What a lovely sound. Oh, Boggy. Your tail says you're excited too. Oh, it's just the best soundtrack. <laughs> so good. Oh, it literally makes me want to cry. I always forget this big beginning bit as well. There it is, the holiday. Do -do. Oh. oh it's <laughs> Honestly, we're at the point where the music goes. Do -do 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 -do. And Ali was filming, uh, like trying to get a story, and I could, I was like struggling to keep in how happy I felt just by hearing that song. <laughs> Honestly, if you're struggling to get into the Christmas spirit, 100%, put it on. Just the soundtrack alone is like. Do, 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 do. Good morning, everyone. I am dressed. Like I'm going for a night out and yet I am going to the dentist because I am, I'm not going for a night out. I'm going to um, the CEW Awards tonight to celebrate um, my friend's award, Ginny, who is the head of everything basically at Space NK. And um, so I need to come back very quickly, get myself sorted and then head to the awards in London. I'm then in London tomorrow as well so I need to come back and pack because we're going to stay at the Rosewood and um, Nars are going to be doing my makeup for a lovely dinner and so yes I've got um, I'm back to back and I'm running late so I'm gonna head to my dentist now. <laughs> I'm back from the dentist the reason why I was going was because you know I had the dental work done I don't know what I'm doing with my hands here. Um, you know, I had the dental work done um, a few months ago. I've just got a little bit of sensitivity. I didn't think it was a big deal. My dentist, I've told you about him, he's really, really thorough. And I think he wants to just make sure that everything's stable before we move on to the next stage, which is obviously having my buttons removed from Invisalign. This was the second time that I was trying to have Invisalign and I just don't think I'm a candidate for, for Invisalign. I just, it just doesn't work on my teeth. Um, it's really strange and it's really quite frustrating. Um, so I am gonna be going down a different route, but I needed to make sure that my teeth are, are fine. So we've had some, uh, what they called x-rays done. <laughs> and um, he always like basically follows up with the treatment plan. I also picked up some shoes. I got my little suede Manolos rehealed because um, these were absolutely battered. So I got those done. And 
something has arrived. And when I tell you, I don't want to hype this up, but I feel like I have been hyping this up because every time you guys see my makeup recently, you're like, what is that on your lips? And um, I can't tell you. <laughs> that is the long and short of it at the moment. I can't tell you, but I can show you because something has just jarive. And let me see if I can hide what it says and just show you that the colour that I am wearing is, can you see that? Rose Thorn by Lydia Millen. So that is my most worn lip pencil. And I swear to God, this is the best, the best colour ever. Rose Thorn 110% is like the one. I'm just trying to make sure I'm not showing you. Um, when I tell you that like, and I feel like I can never say this because I'm not a cool girl, but like the cool girls ask me about this one. Mm-hmm. <laughs> the cool girls said to me, some of them, what is that on your lips? And I was like, do you know what? I can't tell you. <laughs> but seriously, I, I mean it when I say some of the people that have asked me what is on my lips has been by far the biggest compliment in the process of coming up with this collaborative um, product because I've learned my lesson over the years like this isn't about me just being like yeah whatever like you know we can just work together and we can do this and I'll accept that you know you want that color and I'll just put my name no I've learned my lesson I've learned my lesson from launching my brand that these things take a bit more time and I'm not saying that this is the best thing ever but I really feel like I've developed a wonderful color and I know what people are going to say they're gonna be like Lydia you've just made spice if I had just made spice, okay, if I had just made spice, <sighs> I would not be clinging on to this grubby little nub of a lip pencil because I just would have worn spice. I could get it anywhere. I could order it now. I can order it in bulk, but it is not the same, okay? It is not the same. This is richer, more warm, more buttery in texture, first and foremost. It's not like putting like um, like chalk on your lips. It is, it's almost like a product in itself. And I'm just telling you about this and you can't buy it. So I don't know why I'm doing this, but I just want you to know that, okay? It is not spice. I know I loved spice for many years. Spice is dead to me. Rose thorn is it, is where it's all at. This is like, it's chef's kiss in my humble opinion. For me, this has been a really, really fun process. It's also taken a lot of time. You'll know I started speaking about this lipstick many, many months ago. I've been wearing it for many months and um, I wanted to know that it had a great feel on the lips on its own. I wanted to know how it transitioned from summer to spring to autumn to winter. I've got another color as well, which is just as beautiful. But the fact that these have arrived, I can, literally stop sweating because I was thinking, this is not going to take me through the party season. I've got a lot of things to do. And this little guy was not gonna cut the mustard. We're clinging on for dear life. Like I sharpened it today and I was like, <laughs> so anyway, the fact that I now have two rose thorns we also have rose petal which is a little bit more pinky a little bit more flirty but i'm just i'm gonna stop telling you about it now because you can't buy it it's more exclusive than an hermes bag because you actually can't buy it okay i'm not you don't have to play a game with me i can't sell it to you that's the way that it is <laughs> um but i am really really happy with this because i always know when something is something that i like wear and wear and it's the only thing i'm reaching for it just feels really lovely and i'm really happy with it so to have this, I'm over the moon. This has made my day because it means it come with me and um, I don't have to worry about my lipstick. And also, this just doesn't look great. When I get it out and I'm using all of these samples, it's like, yeah. So anyway, now I'm trying to like, get my stuff together and pack for going down to London um, for this evening and um, celebrating with my friend. That's what I'm gonna do. My dentist thought I was absolutely mental turning up like this, but I just don't have the time. I don't have the time. Okay, outfit of the evening. My skirt is 
Lalage Beaumont. It's a little bit too big. I'm going to take it to be um, taken in. Then I've got a Lily Silk Cashmere jumper, which obviously I won't wear with the coat. I have Chalcedonia tights on, which I don't even know what denia these are, but they are very, very sheer and um, I need to get more of them because actually I want to get the chocolatey ones because I feel like they're a little bit warmer. Then the shoes are a pair of old Jimmy Choo's. I've had these for at least six years and never worn them. But if there is one thing I know about black shoes is that they generally always come back around or stay in fashion. And so these are kind of like a Mary Jane pointed heel, but they, they don't have a huge heel. So I thought they'd be quite comfortable. So yes, this is a um, Lily Silk Cashmere jumper. And then my belt is actually from a Dior belt. It's a big Dior belt. Um, but I took the little belt and you got two belts in one. I didn't even realize. Obviously, back in as usual. And then my Amelia Wickstead coat, which I bought last year and I got quite annoyed because it went into the sale. However, it hasn't come back this year, so I'm not that annoyed. And also, I feel like this is sort of a really good silhouette for dressy like outfits, but also like just wearing in general. It feels really nice. Um, and I used to think that it was a bit too big for me, but I think actually it's pretty good. So that is my outfit for the evening. I'm gonna jump in my taxi and head to the Rosewood to meet with Ginny and everyone else is going. I think that Rhea is going, which is always a recipe for disaster because I'm not supposed to drink tonight because I've got to be up early. And I think I'll be doing myself a massive favor if I don't have any drinks this evening. <laughs> Thank you. Um, first of all, I need to thank Joe, my friend. Uh, the 50 pounds is 
college by now. <laughs> I want to thank all of the members of the CEW board who recognise me. Um, I feel at this point in my career, because I have been doing this for 32 years, this is a little bit like the Lifetime Achiever Award at the Oscars, where you know, Lady Gaga wheels out Liza Minnelli, and you just desperately hope she isn't going to break into song. <laughs> Actually, anybody that's done karaoke will know that I don't mean Liza Minnelli in person. I just say that. As generous in her spirit as she is with her time and knowledge, Ginny is the personification of PR. And so I am so very honoured and beyond thrilled to deliver the Members Achiever Award to our darling Ginny Smith. something from Chanel and, the, and Lisa's doing the unboxing for her. Come on. <laughs> we need the full unboxing. Hi guys. Yes. evening I'm back home and I just want to rewind and go back to the start where I didn't tell you what CEW was because I was in a manic rush and not thinking straight and I remember I made a promise to you that I'm going to stop assuming that you know everything that I'm talking about and where I'm going and explain but basically CEW um, stands for Cosmetic Executive Women and it's basically a um, network of members, something like over 10,000 members, which all centres around a passion for beauty, the beauty business, the beauty industry. And when I tell you that anyone who is anyone in beauty is there, I really do mean it. Like Jess Diner from Vogue, um, Ginny from Space NK, the founder of Hourglass, um, who did the most fantastic and inspiring speech. I don't know if I actually recorded it. I think I tried to, but it was basically like her love letter to beauty. And it was, it gave me chills. She was incredible. Um, there was also the founder of Drunk Elephant as well there. Um, and obviously I also filmed Nadine Baggett's uh, award but I was there with my friend Ginny because she was the only PR 
to be recognized as part of the Achiever Awards. So there were brands, there were founders, there were influencers, um, and Ginny was the only PR. And I feel like that was really momentous because obviously I work with a lot of PRs and I think that it's one of those jobs that maybe, I, maybe I'm wrong in this and any of my friends that are in PR will tell me that they, they do get the recognition. But I think from my side, um, just from when we're going on events and things like that, they put on these most spectacular shows and events and launches and we put it out there, but we're tagging the brands. We're not tagging the actual individual that has put this together. Um, and so I think that for Ginny to be recognized in this way, it was just an honor to be there with her first and foremost, um, but also just a bit of a, a moment for her job and the brand and also that career as well so it was really really cool um but i also as i as i was saying i saw nadine baggett she did her speech i would have slotted in bits and pieces if not maybe i'll do it in, in this but um nadine baggett was being uh, recognized and she was her award was presented to her by her friend joe good and i met joe just before um the award started uh, we've spoken a little bit here and there and um it was really lovely it was so funny we were like dressed exactly the same it was so funny she was in her gorgeous poofy skirt i was in my gorgeous poofy skirt um and she was very very funny um and nadine was basically talking a lot about the like ageism in the industry and how that's hugely like moving forward um she was presented her award also by helen mirren and davina mccall and it was just really just a wonderful experience the other person which is so wild um, it was really weird actually, Ginny spoke to this lady and I had looked at her necklace, she had a really beautiful Chanel necklace on and she introduced us and she said oh this is Shavata and I was like oh my gosh I was just eyeing up how beautiful your necklace was and we chatted a little bit. Anyway we're then chatting again, we're like in a group, we're just chatting and she goes oh by the way this is Lydia and she goes Lydia, I know your stepmum. I know her, I know I know her, your stepmom and I know her friend Massey. In fact, Massey works for me. And I was like, shut the front door. This is so strange. <laughs> anyway, she was being also recognized. Um, she is a real sort of icon in the brow business. And um, she was the first person to come and, and thread brows. And I think she thread, thread, threaded the brows of an editor at Vogue. I think it's a bit of an inside story that most people know that I was sort of a bit like, oh, I don't know this story. <laughs> but um, she was also being recognized. It was just, you know, there were tears, there was laughter, and it was just really lovely to just spend, spend time with people. It also feels like when you go to CEW, it feels like, for me anyway as an influencer, like I'm going backstage. Like it's really weird because I, I'm like, it's usually influencer events, but this is like the industry people events. And so I'm like, it's an honor to be there first and foremost. You don't just get invited at all. And I was very much like Ginny's plus one. And I was very much Ginny's Instagram, like husband for the night. I've got all of the content I could get for her, but um, it is an honor to have been there really really like the you know the the founders of Augustinus Bader they were there like it's just it's a big deal and um I went once before a few years ago I was invited by Terry de Gunsberg it was the first time I met her husband and um she was being recognized for her achievements in the beauty space and I think at that time I didn't really understand like I was so new to this and I didn't really understand the enormity of it and there's lots of times in my career where that's been the case um but as I'm like older now I really sort of understand I'm like my god like this is a real honor to have been there and to witness this and it's just these women and men are shaping beauty standards beauty trends um and it, it was really really very cool my husband you can see the remnants of a pizza because ali had a pizza night with his friends um it is very late and i've got to be up in six hours because i'm going back to the rosewood which is where i was tonight i should have booked a room i didn't even think like i thought i was I don't, let's just not talk about it okay i should have just I should have just booked a room and I'm not packed and so I am going to um I'm gonna go to bed 
because I can't even, I haven't kissed my schnoots and I spent all night talking to Laura who was sat next to me. We, we just talked about dogs and all of the dogs that we would love to like help and look after. And she was telling me about her rescue dogs and I was telling her about my pampered pooches that are definitely not rescues. Um, but just all of the wonderful animals that there are that we just want to like help and save. That was basically what we talked all night about. <laughs> it was really lovely. Um, but yes, anyway, bed, 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 bed. Um, this might be the end of this vlog, but um, if it is, I'll see you in my next vlog. Um, yeah, <laughs> good night. <laughs>